Welcome everyone to a special live correspondence Zoom from Green Lake Park. We have several folks stationed around the lake to talk about how we can make Green Lake Park and Aurora Avenue a little safer. And the potential here is to reimagine what can be done on Aurora uh, Avenue specifically by retaking what used to be a bu uh, bus lane and making it a safe path. But we're gonna talk about a few other connections. As you can see by the main slide, what we hope for is an all ages and abilities walking and biking path all the way around the lake, the outer part of the park. Um, and so we have a specific opportunity to see if I can, to make a path that connects with uh, West Green Lake Way on the south end um, with Aurora Avenue on the west side and then West Green Lake Drive on the north end to make a complete loop what, with a new protected bike lane that is being installed right as we speak. And so with that, um, we are going to go to correspondence around the lake starting in the south end at the intersection of the pitch and putt to kind of describe the existing conditions and the potential for something new. And uh, we will then keep going around the lake until we're finished. So with that, I'm going to send it over to Max, who is over at the Pitch and Putt right now. And you can see the 2A bike lane right there. That's great. Brock, are you able to hear me? Absolutely. Great to hear you. Yeah, my name is Max. I'm a resident of the East Green Lake Way area. And I have my camera pointing northbound on East Green Lake Way. And as you can see, SDOT is finalizing the last minute details on the two lane bike lane path just to the east side of the unpaved route, uh, you know, running path. So pedestrians unfortunately use the running path, which is unpaved. And then next to it now with the new development of the two lane bike path, which is very exciting as a resident, myself and other neighbors have commented even in the last week about the increased use of the bicycle path not only from adults, but also even children. I can honestly say it's probably the first time in multiple years I've seen kids bicycling on this two-lane bicycle path. As you turn and start facing southbound, you can see the very end of the bike path here, basically at the bottom points of the Green Lake Golf Course, the two-lane bike lane ends. The southbound bike lane continues across the intersection and continues over the intersection down a paved road, a paved bike path to connect up with traffic. And you can see the person right now going to use that. For people coming from the south, coming north, they will actually have to cross the intersection to take this bike path here north. And that's an unusual intersection. I haven't really tried it myself, but it's interesting. But if you've not been here before, the revamping of this intersection is quite substantial. What is interesting is that the bike path heading southbound along East Green Lake Way, if you were a bicyclist, you would take a left, go across here, and go down this bike path here, which is not actually currently used by bicycles. As far as I can tell, it's mostly a walking path. But as you head over to West Green Lake Way, you'll note a few things. During the shutdown, this whole area was shut down completely to traffic in both directions, which was nice. And so you had people spaced out, bicyclists, walkers, uh, children using this area. But recently this section of the path has been discontinued for um, the closure and cars are going north or south right here. But as you can see on the right-hand side heading north, this would be a great opportunity for the continuation of not only a single route bike path, but a double route bike path in the same direction. That's about it for my end, and I'll pass the, new, the baton over to the next person. All right, thank you, Max. I think I'm the next person. My name's Tom, and I am at the north end of West Green Lake Way. You can see a barricade behind me, and people are using this back bike path here. Uh, as Max was saying, on the south end, the barricades are in place right past the uh, parking lot for the tennis courts and the dog park. Uh, so people can drive both directions to and from those parking lots 
But after that, it is closed off to just biking and walking all the way up to this point where they intersect with the uh, off ramp to uh, from Aurora and then the on ramp back onto Aurora. So once again, this is looking southbound along West Green Lake Way. We have barricades closed it off so people can walk and bike safely. I've already seen a lot of kids and commuters come through here. I myself used to, before the pandemic, bike every day down this road, shared with cars. At the beginning of the pandemic, SDOT uh, closed it off so it was just one way uh, northbound. And now it is closed off in both directions to cars and it's open only for biking and walking in this one section. And then you come here and you see there's one car here, but really not much traffic at this intersection because there's nowhere for people to go. They can't turn south down towards the, the tennis courts and the dog park. So all they can do is go left up onto Aurora or make a U-turn and go back the way they came. You also hopefully will see a bus soon. You'll notice that this is the intersection where the rapid ride E-line comes off of Aurora and makes a left, goes underneath Aurora at the 63rd Street underpass and then lets off uh, and picks up people on the west side of, of Aurora. So that is the main reason that the uh, unused lane on Aurora is uh, now being proposed for a bike and walking path, which is what Brock will talk about next. So I'll pass it to you, Brock. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, I'm going to flip my camera here for a second. All right, so we're here at the intersection of West Green Lake Way and Aurora Avenue. And you can see right here, it may get loud at times. We have a little bit of a pulse of traffic. You can see West Green Lake Way is super wide and has plenty of space to extend um, a, a Jersey barrier protected route uh, through it. And then on to Aurora right here. And you see the path is quite narrow through this segment. So when runners come by or are biking, there's, it's really narrow and can be dangerous where people have to step out into Aurora uh, in order for people to pass safely. Now, we have this opportunity to put a Jersey protected um, path on Aurora because it's outside lane uh, that is northbound on Aurora does not need to be a dash stripe. When the rapid ride E went into place a little over a decade ago, that was striped to be a bus lane because it extended the bus only lane that was south of here and north of here, um, you know, a little over a mile north of here. So that cars were not allowed to be in this segment of needlessly merging to the right and then back to the left to keep going. So we have this additional capacity that doesn't need to be here and instead we can make this really narrow lane or this narrow path safer for people to walk and bike along this route. And you can see the car traffic is very fast. So as they come through here, it'd be really nice to have that protection to go through uh, to, as you go along um, Aurora and the park. And so you guys can see that narrow path that Brock was talking about. You can see all three lanes of Aurora. And so what, what we're essentially saying is this Jersey barrier, which acts as a protection device between the, the two cars uh, or two directions of car traffic could be moved over so that, you know, this Mercedes coming in at about 50 miles an hour can, can be a lane over and with some protection. Um, so I'm going to just walk north now. Um, I'm, at a, I'm at the location of a portion of this stretch where a runner was hit in the fall of 2019. She sustained serious injuries, had to have her neck uh, vertebrae essentially fused to her head. She survived. She had a concussion. Um, she's, you know, fortunately forgiven the driver, but she was never going to be able to really move her neck the same way again. Um, as you can see, the, this connection between the Jersey barrier connect people across Aurora, thank God people stop. What they don't do is obey the speed limit. Most people here, this is one of the most heavily uh, sped along stretches. We'll watch the drag race here as the gentlemen start your engines. There they go. 
Um, it's very loud. It's very noisy. The average speed here is over 40 miles an hour. Uh, the upper percent, uh, upper half percentile, I think, exceeds the speed limit by five to 10 miles per hour. Um, and SDOT did a study recently with speeds topping out as high as 90 miles an hour. So while it's good to have this, you know, pedestrian button to signal us across, that's an added perk of safety. But you can imagine it if we move this Jersey barrier over um, and provide some relief for people along this path to uh, have some protection from vehicles so that there's no more collisions. That's only one of the collisions that's been many along this stretch over the last decade or plus. Um, and with that, I will flip it back over to whoever's next. <laughs> Um, I'm going to quickly show the screen again. Um, so we will do this in a moment. All right. So hopefully we have, okay, the shared screen is here. So you can see down this, this route that uh, the Jersey Protect Barrier would provide a substantial improvement for the conditions here. And um, it, it would be a marvelously, uh, a, a marvelous experience that expands the park essentially by another 10 to 12 feet um, and make it safer for people who are running so they don't get hit. And just to put a, a face to the name or a face and a name to uh, the person who was hit that Ryan was just talking about. Um, I want to make sure that you can see who that person was. Um, you know, we want to make sure that people feel safe and are actually safe on the, along this route. So with that, um, I'm going to kick this back over to Lee um, to, to talk about the north end of the park and of Aurora. This is Lee Brush at the north end of Green Lake. I'm on West Green Lake Way at the north end. It used to be a road, a road that was continuous completely around the lake until Aurora um, interrupted it. Um, that's why there's a, a West Green Lake Way at both ends of the lake. This is a very um, pleasant, uh, neighborhood street, shouldn't have a lot of cut through traffic. However, it does. The lane on, a la on Aurora that we're thinking about um, eliminating ends at this street, Green Lake Way and uh, Aurora Avenue. The, um, you can see the traffic coming along the slip lane here is very dangerous. It encourages people to stay at Aurora's speed as they go down that residential street. The, you can see the walk that is all along um, Green Lake right here along Aurora. It's very, very um, rough. This is one of the least rough places. And the traffic is speeding along at its speeding time. You can see up here, up straight ahead, is an alternative way, route that all the cars that are turning here could be using the, the street at Winona. And with that, I'll turn it over to Robin. Hey everybody, I am up here nearly to Winona. Um, and let me turn the camera around. Um, so this is where, can you see it? Where West Green Lake Drive um, comes off. There's this slip lane here that is coming off of Aurora and there's really zero point for it. Um, 
it it doesn't make a lot of sense other than to maybe um, turn and go the other way on on Winona, uh, Winona not Winona, um, 77 North West Green Lake Drive North. And when people are parked up there, it's very dangerous for people to try and cross the street to this pedestrian island, which doesn't really have any way to get off of it. I'm gonna try something else, guys. I wanna turn the camera back around. Sorry. Okay, I'm just turning the camera around this way. Can you see it? No. We can see it. Well, now you, now you. We're seeing you. Now we can see the roadway. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's that pedestrian island. Here's somebody wanting to cross. Uh, earlier, there was there were cars parked up there where that one car is parked, and people turning off of um, Winona could not see um, people in this crosswalk or people trying to go to that pedestrian island for. I don't know how you get off of it. Um, I hope they'll mark a crosswalk. Um, up here, we've got um, Winona is super busy and this these intersections are very complex. It would be helpful if some of the, uh, the legs were eliminated. It's virtually impossible to turn out, um, if it's rush hour, to turn out of this street onto Winona. If you wanted to make a left turn, it's hard to see. And I assume, I don't know, maybe Brock knows, I think we're gonna have a crosswalk marked here. And I hope we have a crosswalk marked over at Ashworth. Seems like Ashworth has become um, a big thoroughfare. Uh, earlier when I was here, I recorded some video and there were like 10 cars at a time coming down Ashworth and accessing Aurora. So I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, I wanted to, I suppose Lee already talked about um, this being a family friendly route on West Green Lake Drive North, um, but right now it's, uh, there's just the dirt path. And one of the uh, things that could be is we could have a greenway on uh, West Green Lake Drive North so that the traffic would be slow and calm, especially if it were um, limited access down at the other end. And then maybe the slip lane were eliminated. We could have a very pleasant, family friendly, maybe with speed humps um, kind of environment for people to, to walk around. Um, also further down, um, where I walked earlier, um, people want to access this business district. And I'm hoping that uh, there's a crosswalk here. And I feel like it really needs to have some kind of um, beacon control. You see, I'm walking towards it now. It's the traffic coming around these corners is oftentimes moving too fast because it doesn't seem like anybody's ever going to cross the street here. But when we get down to this intersection, which is where um, the Green Lake Drive North comes in and there's the new bike lane, it comes in, it kind of leaves you um, wondering what you should do. I think that maybe they're going to put some green cross bike paint on this crosswalk and maybe there will be a bike signal on the the um, new signal, but I'm not sure. Brock probably knows and can tell us about that. But I know that it's confusing for people to use right now. And again, it seems like uh, there should be some kind of control. It looks like there is going to be a pedestrian light right here, so that you can get across and access these businesses that are that are here. And I think that kind of wraps it up for me. Fantastic, Robin. Um, I think we we started with Max at the south end of the lake near the pitch and putt and ended with Robin at the north end 
uh, near the business district where she used to own a pizza shop. And uh, between those two places will be a two-way protected bike lane installed on the north and, and the east side of the lake. But to make the complete loop, we're gonna need to have some improvements towards um, West Green Lake Way on the south end, Aurora Avenue on the west side, and then West Green Lake Drive on the north side of the lake. And all of that is possible um, with some modest improvements. And I think that's just really fantastic. I'm gonna um, share again, just kind of an ending screen here um, in just a moment. And so, you know, eventually we will be able to have a complete loop around the lake. And then, um, you know, there's these important connections on the south end, um, an extension from where Tom uh, was at to where I stood uh, to make sure that that keep moving street that's currently in place can connect to Aurora, having the Aurora um, uh, Jersey barrier, taking up that lane, and then a final connection up to the north. And maybe a little additional design that's needed as Robin was highlighting between West Green Lake Way and the intersection uh, where the protected bike lanes come in, which is Green, uh, sorry, West Green Lake Drive, uh, Green Lake Drive and East Green Lake Drive. There's so many Green Lake drives and ways along the route. Um, you know, the key points here that we have is to, that this will improve the safety along Aurora, calm traffic on West Green Lake Drive on the north end, expand the park experience and recreational opportunities uh, throughout the lake, and finally to create a new transportation route for people biking and walking around the west side of the lake. Um, and, you know, if you want to help us, um, we have our petition there at uh, GLW Streets org slash Aurora Park Path. Um, and then this is, <laughs> somebody wants me to go back a slide. So I will do that in just a moment. Just our key points here. Our petition. And finally, um, this is part of a broader effort to reimagine Aurora. Um, we have the Reimagine Aurora Coalition to rethink it from downtown where Bertha dug the tunnel uh, to the shoreline border. And so we'll be doing uh, physical, like getting out and walking and auditing Aurora throughout those segments. But we wanted to do a special highlight um, around the park for this specific project uh, and potential that we have.